Welcome to our five-minute Bible study today. We are still in Revelation, and we're in chapter 12. Our last couple of times together, we looked at this great sign that John saw of the dragon and the woman. And we saw this showed the desire of Satan to destroy the mission of Christ, even from the very beginning. But of course, Christ was triumphant. Now, as we continue what chapter 12 tells us, we come to a war in heaven. This is immediately after the triumph, triumphant ascension of Christ. It says, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. That great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. And I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren and sisters, who accuses them before God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, the first question that comes to mind is this great war in heaven uh, fought by Michael and his angels and uh, the dragon and his angels. When did this occur? Some tend to think it might have been a very ancient, even before the creation of the world, but I don't think so. Uh, Revelation 12 seems to indicate to us that this occurred at the triumph of Jesus on the cross and in the resurrection. At that point, Satan was cast out of his access to heaven. Now, you remember that in the Old Testament, at, at times, especially in the book of Job, we see Satan presenting himself in the courts of heaven before God as the accuser of the brethren. He was the accuser of Job, you recall. But now that has changed. Now with the triumph of Christ, he has been cast out. He can no longer have access to heaven. He is no longer the accuser of the brothers, but now is the deceiver and the attacker because he has been hurled to the earth. So I think this, this triumph uh, of the cross is what's being indicated here and is played out in the war of Michael and the angels casting out Satan and his angels. Now the angels of Satan are those angels who were part of his rebellion uh, and who fell with him. Uh, we usually refer to them as demonic spirits, uh, which we see often in the New Testament uh, that Jesus casting out of people. Uh, but, but you see that, uh, that Satan's role has been changed as he is now cast to the earth and he makes war against the people of God. But his war is futile, for the kingdom has been established and we overcome him. Even when he attacks us, we overcome the dragon by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony of Jesus. Now, as we get to the end of the chapter, uh, John says, I, the dragon saw that he'd been hurled to the earth so he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. And this obviously is in reference to the people of God. You remember we said yesterday that the woman also symbolizes the people of God. So since the dragon has been now defeated by the ministry of Christ, by the cross and the resurrection, he pursues the people of God to try and destroy them. But the woman was given the wings of a great eagle so she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for time times, and half a time. There's that three and a half again, that 42 months, that 1,260 days, that time, times, and half a time. Biblically, that is the period of harassment, the period of tribulation. So Satan desperately tries to destroy the people of God, but they are preserved. And then the chapter ends. The dragon was enraged at the woman. He went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands, and those who hold fast their testimony about Jesus. So the rest of her offspring, this is the community of the people of God, her offspring are those who, who believe in Jesus, those who hold to the testimony, those who follow the way of Christ. And so we begin to understand the antipathy or the enmity of, of the devil or of Satan against Christians. Because he's been so utterly defeated by Jesus on the cross and in the resurrection, he now wages war against the people of Christ. Revelation makes this clear. You see what Revelation is showing us is a behind the scene glimpse. Uh, 
there's a great conflict behind the scenes of a supernatural element as the enemy of our soul seeks to destroy us because we follow Jesus. The Apostle Peter in one of his letters says, Thy enemy is like a roaring lion seeking to devour us. We see the same thing in, in Revelation. So we know we're involved in a great spiritual warfare. We know there's an enemy out to get us, but we know the victory has already been won. It was won on the cross by Jesus. And we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony of Jesus. So Christians need to be prepared for two things in this world. They need to be prepared for the hostility of the enemy. That is, the devil is out there and he will attack our work. We need to know that. But also we know, need to know that the victory has already been won and we are overcomers because we're covered by the blood of the Lamb and we have the testimony of Jesus. Praise God, the victory is ours because the victory is in the Lamb who died for us and who rose again. The victory is in Jesus. Amen and amen. Hope you have a great day today. I hope it's a blessed day for you. And tomorrow we'll start looking at uh, Revelation 13. Uh, the next move of the enemy of the dragon is to raise up these beasts. So we'll start talking about that tomorrow. But today you just have a great day. And, uh, and I'll see you next time, okay?